Hey friends, Dean here. Before we get you on to your episode, I want to take a moment to invite you to our next virtual online trivia night. Wednesday, May 13th at 8 p.m. Join us either on our Facebook group or on our YouTube page for three rounds of fun trivia, music questions, movie questions, general knowledge questions. It'll be a fun time and a chance to win some prizes and have just a good relaxing night uh, of some trivia at, at home. You don't even have to go out for it. So don't forget, Wednesday, March 13th at 8 p.m., Join us on our Facebook group or YouTube for three rounds of fun virtual online trivia. We'll see you there. In this episode, we're uncorking a top five for you. We're taking an excursion into the obscure as we bring you our top five cult films. Stay with us. Get ready for the 3324 podcast, where lifelong friends Dean Legiro and Eric Coover share their love of all things music and movies. Dean has directed short films and is a music trivia buff. And Eric, trained in audio engineering, brings his extensive knowledge of music and film to the conversation as they discuss, debate, and celebrate their favorite albums, films, and much more. Welcome, friends, to the 3324 Podcast. Dean Legiro here with you. Eric Cooper, say hi. Hello. Hello. And there's another seat <laughs> that is that another person has bellied up to the bar as it were. And a uh, good friend of ours, Andrew Cremines. How are you, sir? I am just happy to be here. Yeah. We're, we're always happy to, to have you. you. Yeah, um, man. Love it. You can find, <laughs> follow Andrew Cremines at uh, Andrew Cremines Art on Instagram. Absolutely fantastic artist. He's been doing a lot of great work recently for Metallica. Uh, endorsed by Metallica, not this knockoff stuff, but <laughs> you know, they're, Metallica said, we want you. And Andy said, I'll do it. So go check him out, Andrew <laughs> Cremines Art on Instagram. I will throw a link into the show notes, so you just have to click it. Really, really not a big uh, a big ask. Just go and like click your mouse over it, and then go see him and give him a follow. You're yeah. too kind. How many, how many times is this now, Andy? Is this five? Is this uh, more? This? Yeah, I think this might be fourth yeah. or fifth. Yeah, so you're fourth in or fifth? Yeah. five yeah. timers club, right? So nice. <laughs> before, so before I, I think we need to we we need to settle some old business before we go forward. Okay. Uh, the, the last episode and Andy did with us was the Batman mm -hmm. and we were all bats about it. <laughs> okay. All right. You know, there's one. Um, oh, geez. Here's the bell. Okay. He officially has the what, bell out. What happened right. afterwards? And, and I think we need, we're going to spend just a quick five minutes on it. And, and then this will make you go listen to our Batman episode. Warner Brothers released like a deleted scene, like right after the film came out, which is very strange, odd. Um, but it was an extended scene where the Batman goes to visit Joker. Yeah. And we get an extended, uh, you know, kind of soft focus scene until, until the end. I, I think we just want to clean that up a little bit. Andy, what did you think of that scene? I thought, because uh, you remember my, uh, I hated the one that ended up in the movie. Remember that was my only complaint about yes. the movie. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, when they're like giggling at the end, like, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Kids, it, was, yeah. it just felt like a waste. Like why yeah. waste it? Like, why waste an yeah. introduction and that sort of stuff. But I thought it was very powerful, the scene. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if this is the case or not, but I loved how he looked chemically burnt. Yeah. Like his, his hair yeah. was all matted and yeah, it was like tufted, it, tufts in the back up and stuff. Yeah. Um, I thought it was really, really powerful. I thought it was really cool. And they, you said, uh, soft focus, they could still recast him. If that, if that was still in the movie, yeah. uh, they could still recast him and, and still be fine with it. Uh, I thought it was great. I thought it, I, I, what'd you guys think? Yeah. Eric. Uh, yeah. I thought it was like, they took that design or the, whatever it was that made him just that much more creepy. Uh, you know, taking that for what, uh, Heath Ledger's Joker brought to the table in terms of the, the scarring, but taking it to that next level of like, yeah, he did look like he was just totally deformed and just something from another, you know, place entirely. So I, yeah. I, I really, it was really effective and it just creeped me out. Yeah. Just his smile alone, just like, ugh. you know, when the, they finally show his mouth, you know, yeah, and it's, uh, the, the that, teeth that are was, all like, ugh. yeah, that's, that's crazy. The, the, yeah. the thing I liked about it, which is different from, from all the other jokers is that there's a relate, you know, there seems to be an interpersonal relationship between the two of them. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. history. M yeah. Much like that, you know, this was very much a scene from silence of the lambs, right. Where mm -hmm. Hillary Starling goes to see Hannibal Lecter with the file, you know, so he, it, 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 and it gives you that, uh, that manhunter feel to it that he already captured the Joker, but yeah, is, is asking for that help. And, and there was the whole thing. Well, you know, your mask, you know, 
you're, you're, you're not wearing your mask now, you know? So there was that, that I like that interplay of, of personalizing their relationship where the other two movies really hadn't done that. You know, Joker from, from the Nolan trilogy was chaos and he was just like a random, random yeah. element out there. Right. And yeah. and then the Tim Burton one was a little less, was a little less so, but not, they not really connected, only connected through the murder of, of his parents. So well, I had read that the reason that the scene didn't make it in the film was it was, uh, it was redundant. I guess there was too much information in that scene that had already yeah. Uh, yeah. that they were building up when he finally does meet the Riddler. So yeah. that's the reason why it's not in the film, but I still would have thought. Yeah. It was, yeah would have I, been, I, you know, I agree with that. It's a great scene, but it, 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 yeah, they, they laid out too much and it, it, it would have taken away also from Batman's yeah. detective skills that he's yeah. going for yep. help, you know, but, right. but it was a neat, uh, neat callback. Uh, so Batman is definitely not a cult film, so we don't have to worry about it showing up on the list. So we kind of, did that, but but go check out our, <laughs> our episode about the Batman and, and then you'll come back to this episode. Then you'll get the end part, which we've never done before. We've never continued a conversation, but uh, it was the first thing I was thinking about when Andy, when we were going to have Andy and I'm like, we got to talk about that extra scene. You know, what's funny, yeah. uh, just a, a little bit extra here is like Joker and just by design uh, can go wrong very easily on film and um, to get somebody to laugh mm -hmm. maniacally can very easily just be so fake. <laughs> and, um, you know, that's like that thing, like, like in every horror movie, it, it, they've done this thing, like all, everybody who's possessed has to be a contortionist. Everybody who is yeah, silent yeah. has to do that head tilt like a dog <laughs> to make it yeah. extra creepy. That, that, that but, I mean, stare. That, yeah. The maniacal, <laughs> maniacal laugh is so hard to do. And like, that's yeah. what I thought was so great about, um, the Joker movie with Joaquin Phoenix was that it was, it was painful for him, for him to do it. Yeah. And, it, um, that was a new spin on it. But I, I thought like to talk about this scene that we were just talking about, I feel like there was a couple of laughs there that were like, Oh, you're trying a little too hard. But, um, you know, again, the character, I mean, there's a, it's a movie with a guy dressed like a bat. So, I mean, what do you guys say? Yeah, there you go. What do you want? What do you want? And, and, yeah. a, and a character that ended up waddling like a penguin called the penguin. Yeah. Right. So there you have it. So bringing you up to speed for this episode uh, we haven't done a top five in a while, so it was about time that we uncorked one. And uh, Eric was like, hey, why don't we do a top five cult? And I'm like, oh, my God, he wants to do the cult. I'm like, yes. And then he <laughs> no. said films. And I'm like, oh, cult films. Okay. I thought we were going to do like the cult electric. But, uh, I, you know, I was like, ah. But we're doing we're good. We're, we're happily doing top five cult films, which is a great subject. Very subjective. So um, and yeah. actually, b before we just came on, Andy said well, what is what is a cult film? Like, what what's what the parameter, it? right? Yeah. What defines it? And as you yep. know, it's old news, but we need rules. We need parameters. So I brought the parameters with me. And <laughs> from, <laughs> from Google, a cult film, also commonly referred to as a cult classic, is a film with a cult following, obscure oh. or unpopular with mainstream audiences and often revolutionary or ironically enjoyed. Sometimes the definition is expanded to, to exclude films that have been released by major studios or have big budgets yeah. or try to specifically become cult films or become accepted by mainstream audiences and critics. Cult films are defined as much by audience reaction as they are by content. There is your definition. Okay. Can you say that again? <laughs> I'm I just closed the tab. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, um, so when you say basically, big, basically like, not big budget studio films and stuff that people maybe like ironically, right. like showgirls. Sure. Uh people yeah. like it not because it's a great piece of cinema, but but because it's so horrible. Right. It's so bad it's good. And I actually yeah. saw that in a the theater. <laughs> yeah. Um Jeez, I don't know what I was on. But there's also cases of a big budget <laughs> movie or major studio putting out a property that didn't do well, that tanked at the box office. So that in itself, you know, it's called it, a because, bomb. It calls it a bomb, but you know, people, <laughs> there are, there is an audience for it and it yeah, latches it can become on. One. So yeah, there, there's a, you, 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 you know, Shawshank Redemption is a perfect example of that. Like that is a, that, that it's, I think it's considered a cult film because of that you think so? reason. Yeah. Because it was up against, you know, Forrest Gump and, and those big, you know, and, and Pulp Fiction, mm -hmm. which you again could call a cult film. You know, oh. Tarantino's Pulp mm -hmm. Fiction. Again, that is considered a pulp officially, you know, a a cult film. Yeah. Even though it was really popular. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's hard to you know, it's hard to nail down. 
but I guess right. it, it is that has that has that subjective spin to it. So you got, it I does, guess, and, and but I think there are some parameters as well. You know, yeah. for for me, or for what I was thinking about, I was trying, and I did a little extra research as well, just to like solidify the case. Mm -hmm. Is um, for my list, I actually looked up the budget and how much it made as well, just to see what the con, you know, to see if it was truly, you know, at the time, because like you said. Maybe Shawshank didn't make a ton of money then, but it's become much beloved, right? It, it's, right. It's become yeah. more of a beloved film than a cult film. People love the Shawshank Redemption. They like that's true. They yeah. like it as a piece of cinema that it just went undiscovered. Yeah. For the most part, at the time, but then become a, became a beloved film that everyone loves it. The stuff that I have on my list, I, I went and I, I like looked at the budget, looked at how much it made. I'm kind of like, okay, these <laughs> these these are qualified stink you know at the time they were stinkers like they they stunk okay. up the room they, okay. they stunk up well. the theater at the time so um we've got we've got that so and then at the end so we're going to do our five and then at the end we're going to we're going to do at least one cult film that you just couldn't like couldn't get behind for some reason right everybody right has has you know there i'm sure there are many but but we picked one uh i have a feeling it, it, we all might have picked the same one it could be um, mm. but, but we're going to, we're going to throw one under the bus, just one. We, we won't be totally, uh, You'll dra be drag all these movies, but we'll, we'll do <laughs> one. And, it, and like I said, if I'm right, it could only be literally one if, if, if my guess is correct. But yeah, anyway, are we ready to get this started? Let's I think so. All right, let's do it. Eric, why don't you give us number five? Okay. My number five. Oh, for, okay. So first of all, I'm known for notoriously, <laughs> Bucking you know, the rules. Buck, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Dr. Strange. I keep breaking the rules, right? So um, we saw how that works out. <laughs> but uh, no spoilers. My, I haven't I, seen I, it yet. A few, a few on, on, on my list are, 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 are personal, you know, somewhat huh? to me. And it, it's, 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 there's some memory, nice memories attached. So that's why they made the top five. Uh, so my number five is a, is a particular favorite of mine from 1981. It's, uh, John Borman's Excalibur, Ooh, uh, nice. which was uh, to me the, by far the best adaptation bar none of the King Arthur story. And yeah. it just felt like such a, a dreamscape to me, like watching that movie. It just felt like you were in the middle of a dream. It was so like hypnotic mm. in that, in that sense, I guess the only thing to compare it to would be, for, you know, the only other thing that would be Monty Python's Holy Grail, <laughs> the Holy Grail. Not first which, night with Richard Gere. <laughs> no, no. no bro. Uh, I'm afraid not. No, uh, but no. I mean, this this boasted a, a really impressive cast at the time. You had Patrick Stewart before he was he was Patrick known. Stewart. William Neeson was in it. Uh, Gabriel Byrne, um, some notable names, and it just I just remember and, 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 and Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren, who was uh. quite the dish uh. in this film. Yeah, she was. Yeah. You know, nice on the eyes. And I, I remember uh, fondly because our mutual friend, John was a big fan of it as well. Yeah. And every time we would, you know, this was a very quotable film that he, especially him. I mean, like I, I would, I would like get in his car and the, the first thing out of his mouth, he's, he's, he's like reciting things from the movie because he had just watched it. He's like, <laughs> you swear by your kingship. You're like, what the hell are you talking about? Like I hadn't seen it yet. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and because I didn't see it in the theater, <laughs> oh, or at least okay. I don't remember seeing it in the theater. I, I actually saw it on, on cable. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how he saw it. But he kept watching it. He would watch it like every day because yeah. he was obsessed with it. So yep. when you um, saw so, yeah, it's a nice fond memory of, you know, I love that time period of, of, of fantasy films. And, you know, so that, that you know, when you saw and it's not uh, one that oh, sorry, buddy. I'm sorry, sorry, it's not one that, that people uh, talk about much. You know, people yeah. normally talk about Highlander or, or Conan the Barbarian is more yep. sort of in the main flux, you know, whatever. So Excalibur, I just wanted to give it some love. And nice. So, yeah, it's great. So there it is. Yep. When John Luke Picard got cast, did you say, hey, that's the guy from Excalibur? <laughs> or did you did you put the two and two together? Because no, I yeah, no, I did, I I did not. Maybe. I didn't either. I did not. It, yeah. Actually, I, it, it took a, you know, when, when Next Generation first aired, uh, I didn't realize it was the same actor. And I had seen Excalibur like maybe a few years later when I was into Next Generation big time. And then I was, and I was like, oh my God, he's Leon, De, Leon, De, you know, the De, France. It's like, holy crap, that's, that's Patrick Stewart. And I was yeah. like, yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I, I actually saw Excalibur yeah. in the theater. Yeah. Um, 
and I didn't, I was pretty young. What was that? 81, you said, right? Yeah. You must have seen rel- it. Relatively pick, young. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I, and I didn't at the time, didn't really get it. I'm like, oh, these guys are dirty. They're muddy. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it seems like it's going on forever. This film. And it wasn't yeah. until I, I, I watched it again years later that I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. I get yeah. this now. Like at the time I was like, I used to go just whatever was playing around the corner, I would go see. So I was like, oh, this Excalibur. Mm-hmm. And and didn't really kind of connect to it. And then much later, I'm like, wow, what a just a sublime film. The performances, uh, yeah, de- dealing with the with the fantasy elements, but kind of trying to keep it somewhat real and, and grounded. In, yeah, it's in, sort in of the like quest and everything. So right. it was, yeah, just a really well done film. And then that that one sequence towards the end when they're riding the horses through the trees and all the all the like the flowers are are, are coming off the yeah. off the off the trees and uh, I forget what song is playing. It's a classical piece, right? Yeah, um, there's well they used uh, something um, familiar. Yeah, and it's just like well they used like that piece. Those... They they used it in Captain America: First Avenger. Yeah. It's that German yeah piece of classical music. Dun dun, you know that yep. you know that you know yeah, that's, and it's just you know, so they use that epic as the score. when they're like riding through yeah. and these all these knights and it's just yeah. real, and the, the cinematography and that was yeah. great, especially towards the end when when Arthur fights his son and. Uh, with the sunset and everything so yeah, yeah. wow I, that is a certified it, that is certified cult we, we it give it we give the line stamp. of like reality and magic it was all this yeah. talk of magic in the film but you don't actually see the magic like they talk because the about age of magic was dying that was the thing it was that's like, right like that was and it was, was really waning. well well done it was yeah. really well portrayed yeah i need yeah. to soak so it again i i i don't yeah. remember i have flashes of it but there was this uh, bl- there was this blur of movies around that time that's in my head s- from seeing that like lady hawk and legend and excalibur yeah. Yeah. that it's all kind of soft focus fantasy <laughs> yeah yeah that, uh, it, it kind of opened the door for, yeah. for many of those films to come yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Def- definitely wow uh, great Cert- certified cult you got it you're in <laughs> andy what do you okay. got what do you got for us okay uh i have zero justification for this choice i can't objectively make the case that it's a good movie at we all. might do it for you I love it already uh, i'm already <laughs> uh it's directed by larry cohen uh it's one of my favorite cult horror movies uh it's a movie from 1985 called the stuff and ah. uh it's basically about uh an ice cream like dessert that the world gets addicted to because it tastes great and it has yeah. zero calories and it fills you up but it turns Sounds out familiar Turns yeah. out it's an alien <laughs> substance that crashed into Earth and turns everyone into zombies, you know, like <laughs> like, like you do. Um, but the fun thing that I like about this movie, though, is that it's uh, one of those thinly veiled commentaries on consumerism and capitalism. It keeps cutting to commercials like RoboCop did mm-hmm. uh, yeah. for, for the stuff. Like you're watching the movie and then it just like the screen wipes the stuff. And then it's, uh, you know, you see the commercial <laughs> yeah. for it and everything else. But it's uh, gained a, uh, like kind of a following in the horror uh, group, yeah. you know, because they even sell the containers of the stuff at horror conventions and stuff like that. Cause you know, I don't know if you guys have saw it, have seen the movie or not, but um, the, the special effects are ridiculous. Um, but um, <laughs> it, it, it was, it's just a really fun movie. Cause it's like about industrial espionage and about aliens and about uh, it, it's just, <laughs> yeah. it's ridiculous. It's wild. But, um, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's I think I saw project. it once and I kind of mistook it for another film, which I'm not going to mention because it may appear on this, oh. in, in this, <laughs> in this episode. I, so I don't know. So I don't want to say anything, but it's not on my list, but I'm yeah, never you know, know. So you never I'm know. Yeah, at you, no. Dean. When, when, when movies are self-aware like that, like you said, like yeah. with, like with their commercials and RoboCop, uh, if it's done right, it, it, yeah, it kind of is a little subversive because they're, they're, yeah they're they're know that they're not taking it too seriously and and it makes it that much more fun to watch too like when oh sure and, and, yeah. and paul verhoven was with did that with starship troopers yeah with the commercials of of the recruiting and join and, and kill the bugs yeah you know so you see that you don't really see it too much but um when it's done when it's done right it, it can be, be very effective and it can make like like a film like that kind of like it could give it a little extra like bump it up a star right there's yeah. the main the main guy uh is like a detective and he's like he's acting as if he's in a completely different movie like, <laughs> and like yes. he's going around tr- he's tr- going around trying to find the secret of the stuff or whatever but he's like in this crime thriller in his mind you know and, and probably <laughs> taking it more seriously than any, yeah. than anybody else in the film right yeah, yeah. I, I, th- I think i do remember that yeah <laughs> i know that I, I know it's it's crazy one uh but that uh, that that would be my pick the stuff 1985 cool nice nice check, nice. check it out I'm, excellent uh i'm gonna i'm gonna keep in the 80s i'm, okay. gonna, I'm gonna stay with you guys we're gonna and that's uh certified cult andy yes you're you're in as well 
Uh, I'm going to go to 1988. I saw this move, this film in the theater, probably one of few people that did. And, and it became, it did become a cult classic. They live. Oh, uh, directed by John Carpenter. I didn't know what, first of all, <laughs> I, 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 I was into wrestling, but not in 88. I was into wrestling when I was like really young. So why was I going to see a movie starring Rowdy Roddy Piper as a character <laughs> called Nada? Uh, I have no idea, but again, it was just kind of, <laughs> the poster was pretty, was pretty cool looking. Yeah. It's very yeah. interesting concept. The movie was very strange. Uh, it, it did, mm. it did spawn a very popular quote though. You know, I came here to chew gum and kick ass and I'm all out, out of bubble gum or chew bubble gum and kick ass and I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> uh, that, that kind of has lived longer than the film. And, and John Carpenter is a man of hits and misses and, you know, his misses are pretty big and his hits are pretty big. And this one kind of falls in between. It really it was a miss, you know, theatrically. But I think people really now, like, they love that. that but it's a beloved like, miss, though. It, it was seems a beloved to be miss. one of his, yeah, more. Uh, a 10-minute <clears throat> fight in an alley just to get a guy, the guy to put a pair of glasses on. Like, they're fighting for 10 minutes against the dumpster. It's like, you know, swinging, yeah. swinging two by fours and just fighting with, with Keith David to put the glasses on and he finally gets so tired that he, that he puts the glasses on him. It's like, voila, there you go. One of my favorite actors <laughs> is Keith David. I love that guy. And, and yeah, it's just, so. you know, so it was just a, such a wild film. And then at the end, you know, when, when they get, they, they have like these watches and they can tell what's going on and all this kind of stuff. And it, it kind of ramped up into like this really weird, it, it was like about one thing and then it got even like weirder. Um, yeah. So 1988, they live, the budget was $3 million and it, and, and it made 13 million dollars back dean you're and, probably, and, you might be shocked about this but it's in my top probably 50 movies of all time i have yeah. the they live poster in the other room autographed by roddy roddy piper it says they? to to andy all out of bubble gum uh, <laughs> that's awesome and, um, and i do have to make mention of another 80 staple that was in this meg foster yeah yeah she was in so many movies and she has God. these piercing eyes those eyes yeah. Yeah. right they almost evil lynn like yeah. 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 universe yeah like oh my god they, you yep. know she has these incredibly piercing eyes uh i don't know if they're they almost look like they're devoid of color like they're so yeah. like green or yeah pale um and she was in, in a lot of films in the 80s and then just kind of dropped off but meg foster was uh was the, in they live as well it, so. the movie was at its core smarter than it should be uh, and I mean, the whole idea of, you know, having money say, this is your God and, you know, obey and consume and that sort of stuff. Like I was a kid when the movie came out, so I wasn't, you know, I was burgeoning into teenagehood. So I kind of, it was kind of opened my eyes a little bit to like, wait, wait a minute. What is, what do they mean by that? Oh, I see. You know, mm -hmm. so it, it was, it was smarter, <laughs> smarter than it should, should have been. And there's yeah. a, what my favorite uh, uh, pop artist is named Shepard Fairey. He got famous for using the word obey <clears throat> yep, uh, with the Andre the Giant's face or whatever, but it's the font from the movie. So like the, there's a whole bunch of stuff wrapped around that movie that I absolutely love. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy with that. Yeah, that, Then that morphed into the Obama poster, yep. which from yeah. Shepard Fairey as well, which was Obama with his picture in it as well. So mm. cool. All right. We've, we've gone through number five, Eric, number four. Okay. What's it going to be? What are you bringing to the table? <laughs> well, this one. It's crazy. It's become, I, I, I have a lot of fun watching. I've watched it like three times now. Um, and it's, it, it came late to me, but it came out in 77. Ooh. And of course, with the advent of Criterion, it was never released in the U S and with Criterion collection, they released it, you know, for the first time in the U S. So a lot of people kind of knew about it, but didn't, a lot has been said about it. And a lot of people really went, you know, they they all agree that it's the weirdest freaking movie and it's a Japanese film and it's a movie called house. And it, uh, it, it it's kind of part, I have no idea what, how even to describe it. It's, it's part Scooby-Doo meets uh, like, you know, one of those seventies, like teenage uh, musical types. And you have the school girls, the Japanese school girls going to visit her aunt for the summer. And it's a murder mystery kind of thing but it's a horror film at the same time and it has all this weird like effects and and it's just it's a really bizarre piece of work and it's but it's fun to watch and it's hilarious and i think our mutual friend cj i know would love this movie had he if he even knows about it i don't know if he's ever seen it i've never talked to him about it but i you know watching this movie made me think of him that's why it's on the list mm -hmm. um because it's it's personal 
because uh, so, it's, it's, it's exactly right up his alley. All those components are there. And I, it's, it's a movie that I just absolutely know that he would probably love if he had seen it. And it came out the same year as Star Wars, which blew my mind. And it's like people like Bill Hader love it. You know, it's like it's one of his favorite films. Like it's just, this is a crazy effing movie. And it's like one of my favorite movies. And it's just and, and they everybody had just seen it. And it existed all this time, you know, since 77, and but nobody's ever seen it in America. So it's, it's, yeah, so it's become a brand new cult phenomenon, but it's, but it's, it's been, it's been, it's been around for quite some time, but nobody, mm. if you had seen it in Japan or, or maybe sort of import or something like that, perhaps, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure there are enthusiasts out there who have probably seen it like that, like that. But, you know, for the most part, I think a, a lot of the audience didn't see it until just a few years ago. When it That's came awesome. Out. Cool. So, yeah. Well, what, what we'll have to do is I'll have to find the trailer on YouTube and we'll link it in the show notes. Yeah. It's uh, bizarre. So people can, it's people it's can take a look. It's bizarre, but it's awesome. laughable. It is the kind of thing that you wish you had seen in the theater. And, it, you know, it's just ridiculous. And it's just so, but their, their imagination is off the cuff. You know, the Japanese are just <laughs> wild with this kind of stuff, but it just, it just hits all those points that I know that, you know, certain people love you know, in the genre, especially today with kids, like they love anime and they love this kind of, you know, this, so it's live action anime. It's a horror film. It's, it's, it's really, really weird. No, <laughs> no, kinda... no shared DNA with the film house with no, William has nothing, to do, a, nothing to do with that movie or whatsoever. Okay. It is a completely different <laughs> thing. That, that's it, on my it, list. Yeah. I have <laughs> no, I, I can't, I, you know, you guys just need to check it out. Awesome. <laughs> I will. Right, Your house yeah. from 1977. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not not the not the Channel Five not the Fox show about the Doctor. No, <laughs> no, no. Okay, I'm I'm running out of house references. No, you'd probably have seen to. the cover. It's got like this. It's a, it's like a picture of a of a cat, and it's like a demonic cat, and it's like this kind of weird sort of oh, twisted Cheshire a, a type cat. Yeah, a it's a, an orange okay. cover, and it okay. has like this big grin. Oh, I've you, seen that. You, yeah, you've oh, seen cool. you've seen the art. Yeah, so yeah. check the movie out. It's weird, <laughs> but it's it's, oh, cool. it's it's just fun. It's just wow. a fun watch. Yeah. All right, House, yeah. 1977. Yep. Um, I've never heard of it, so certified <laughs> cult. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, certified cult classic. You can't get any more cult than this. There I you think. go. That's going to be the pinnacle. You know, yeah, and there's a lot of you know films from Japan that you know probably deserve to be seen, but in this case, it is a certified cult. Nice. Even for even for you know. Japanese flair, you know, it's, it's that kind of thing. So it's cause it's just so weird even for that. <laughs> so, yeah. Cool. So there it is. Yep. <clears throat> Number four, Andy, what do you got? I am going to continue my, uh, shellacky horror streak and say, um, Halloween three season of the <laughs> witch, the only <laughs> Halloween movie that does not have Michael Myers in it. Yeah. Um, Oh my uh, goodness. The yes. Halloween the Halloween movies were set up to be an anthology movie. Like each like it was never intended to be Michael Myers' story. It was supposed to be the first movie was that, second movie was going to be the it got so popular that they brought Michael Myers back, but then they're yeah. like, let let's go to number three, let's do the anthology thing we were talking about. Halloween three, of course, is about the uh the three masks that the Silver Shamrock company is uh putting out there that uh at midnight at uh, uh on um Halloween uh, it's going to uh, play the, uh, the the famous song. You know the song, right? Three more days uh, till Halloween. Halloween. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Halloween. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm like a <laughs> brain fart. Okay. Well, or eight more days till Halloween. Yeah, it's like yeah, this yeah, over yeah. Okay. shamrock song gotcha. over and over and over I'm again. Thinking and like then... cult. I'm Blue Oyster Cult for some reason. I'm <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know why. I'm just, more cowbell. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I really enjoy it. And again, it, it's got a cult following in the horror community because uh, it, it just, it's just, it feels like a twilight zone episode mm. and it feels like it's yeah. own standalone thing. It's very eighties. And it's like this, you know, most mustachioed guy is the hero. And then he meets some girl 25 years younger than he is. So of course they're going to be together. And yeah, I forget, I forget uh, his name. His name is Tom. Not Tom scary. No, no. Um, you could be, he could be mistaken for Tom Scary, but he was in uh, he was Tom in Atkins. Lethal Weapon. Tom, Tom Mack. He was in he was yeah. the uh, oh the, he was in Lethal Weapon. He was the the father of the daughter that that committed suicide. Like, yeah, in Lethal banker. Weapon. Yeah, and he was you also find in them. The, you kill them. He, he was in you the Howling me. as well. Yeah, you yeah you, you Howling, owe yeah. me, Roger. Yeah. <laughs> one of the, one of the most you, yeah one of the most <laughs> iconic '80s horror movie posters too with that 
big face coming out of the sky, yeah. the clouds and mm-hmm. everything else. Uh, but those three masks are, uh, you know, kind of a cult, like collectible too. Like they still sell those disturbing. three masks. Yeah. The, uh, very disturbing, the yeah. pumpkin, the witch and the, the skull mask. And, um, yeah. How, yeah, it's, how it, like, it, it's pretty interesting how they, you know, started on the path of like, okay, ho- like, like Friday the 13th, like Halloween, Halloween two, and then just threw the baby out with the bathwater, right? Like you said, like, oh, well, we had this other idea. And let's usually when you're on that trajectory, you kind of stay on it. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. reference Friday the 13th and Freddy's. Yeah. You know, you don't make a Freddy film without Freddy in it. You don't make a Nightmare on Elm Street without Freddy in it in, in yeah. one form or another. Or, you know, so it was kind of de- definitely a risk that in this case didn't pay off, but maybe in the long run it did because it, it showed that they weren't afraid to kind of go out, color outside the lines, as it were. Yeah, nobody mm-hmm. talks about it when they think about Halloween. It gets uh, kind of shoved shoved into the corner there, but I I really enjoy it. Yeah, it's awesome. been getting. I I, re, I've, I I think for a long time it got dismissed because because it wasn't about you know Michael Myers and, yeah. and all that. But now it's like people are actually writing about it now. I've noticed and and actually saying that it's a better film than you remember. You yeah, know, because it's just it so it's, offbeat. It's so yeah. weird. I, I think just, people you know, people didn't like it because Michael yeah. Myers wasn't in it, but that doesn't mean it was a bad film. That's right. Yeah. They were they're like, well, this isn't a Halloween film, but right. So right, it, right away you reject it. You know, if so, you yeah, yeah, if you renamed it something else, would it would it be a good film? Right. If if they if they yeah. took that name off of it and called it something else, and you watched it, would it be a good film? Yeah, you know, that's yeah. probably a better yeah. uh, a better meter or a better judge of that because of the Halloween name is attached to it. You're expecting the right. Shatner mask. Yeah, right? yeah, yep. And Loomis, but in this case, you got three <laughs> three more masks that were that created bugs and snakes in your head yeah. when you yeah. <laughs> you put it on and the music plays it. The, the three yeah, other masks very, very were weird, Spock, very... McCoy, and Scotty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would have been funny. Yeah. Well, uh, so anyway. all right, that well, that is absolutely, definitely, definitely a good choice. Cult classic. Yeah. Um, my number, my number four. Going back to, uh, I'm st- I'm st- a lot of these. Oh, this is uh, this is the last one in the '80s. So only only two in the '80s. This came out in March of 1984. The budget was two million dollars, and it made a paltry 4.7 back. It made nothing back. But this is the movie that goes to 11. That oh, goes to. I understand that reference. I you got it. Don't. <laughs> Sorry. Spinal Tap. This one okay. goes to 11. All right. This is Spinal Tap. You know, I've only seen that movie once. <laughs> what? And so I have oh. no like. If you quote that movie, I will not oh. know what you're talking about. Sorry, I'm I'm like, and, not, and I loved it. I loved the film, but I just I, I've only seen it once. It is it and, is a you know, a masterclass I'm in sure improvisation. It it's a masterclass. Oh yeah, in, I know it. Uh, but the, I, the mockumentary genre, right? It it kind of created a lot of these things that you know it got Christopher Guest and Michael McKean kind of mm-hmm. and Harry Shearer that kind of grouping to do. Uh, best in show and waiting for Guffman and, and it kind of yeah. spurred that kind of stuff along. Um, and then it's got a cast for a supporting cast for days. You got Billy Crystal, Fran Drescher, Paul Schaefer, you know, yeah. kick, do me a favor, <laughs> kick right. this man's ass, kick a man in the ass. <laughs> and then Bruno, Bruno yeah. Kirby is the, is the, is the limo driver. I mean, it's such a great, yeah. a great cast, but such a great parody of rock music and, and the lifestyle and, and all the, the things that you, all the tropes of, of uh, at the time of rock and roll uh, just kind of laid bare on uh, about a band that is really on the edge on the, really on the, over the pre- precipice of their career. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just a, it's so like that you got to just watch, you watch it for the acting. It's like, let, let them go. Here's, I'm sure it was a very loose idea that they had and, they, and, and to watch, you know, Watch the watch these guys just kind of go is is yeah it's just great. They, it's funny when that movie came out, a, a lot of rock stars didn't like it because they felt seen, like they felt <laughs> like they were getting made fun of uh, a little bit. But yeah. but all the rockers that are maybe five or six years after it came out started to watch it, like started to appreciate it and think like, okay, this is pretty funny. So I mean, like yeah, all all, all the bands I like talk about that movie because it's it, to this day still happens like the hello Cleveland, you know, or, uh, yep. or, uh, or it was they're just lost in the hallways behind. Yeah, the they're trying to get to the stage and they're like <laughs> in the boiler stage. room. And then the whole Stonehenge scene, where you know they they wrote the they wrote the dimensions on a napkin and they and they lower the Stonehenge and it's it was supposed to be eighteen feet, but it was eighteen inches because yeah, she's like yeah, look, you wrote eighteen. She shows it was Angelica Houston, I think. She shows him the napkin and says this says eighteen inches. 
<laughs> so they lower this 18 inch Stonehenge down and they have these little people dancing around. It's just com- <laughs> like they, they couldn't win for losing Spinal Tap. But in the end, they ended up winning because they, they all of a sudden got big, started charting in Japan. Uh, and got yeah. big and then and then were able to reform and you know you've got the exploding drummers uh just su- such great stuff that you know um so, so everything fun that to can watch. go wrong goes wrong and it yeah, absolutely it's just does a you know there's, there's the yeah. infighting like like <laughs> that like I that remember, band, yeah. the bands have and yeah uh such great stuff so yeah uh made for two million made for we're gonna we're gonna chalk that up to a cult classic. <laughs> Metallica <laughs> got hell for that too when uh, they released the Black album because in Spinal Tap they their the album, album was, was yeah none more Sniff black. The glove was black. Yeah, mm. uh, <laughs> because the original cover was too sexist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that that's number four is is Spinal Tap for me. So oh, that's good uh, choice. Number three choice. now my the the number I, I'm going to say my number threes. These are like I'm bringing out the heavy hitters. These two were like kind of. Kind of okay. the appetizer. It was like the soup, the soup and the salad. But you know, for me, the the, okay. the entree is coming up with with these three of the heavy hitters. So I'm what do you what do you got similar, for number three? Similar here. All cool. right. So number three is this one's for you, Dean. Yay! Um, <laughs> <Woo-hoo>. <laughs> and I think you know where I'm going with this one. But um, let's see. It's 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 a, another '80s film, '85. And I think this might be the, the the precursor to like a lot of the movies that were made in the '90s, like. Uh, the, the, well, the teenagers, they killed the guy and it was like, we know what you did last summer and those kinds uh-huh. of movies like Scream and, you know, the, you know, um, it's a movie called The New Kids. Oh, and yeah. It, and uh, it featured our favorite prick from, from the oh, favorite yeah. villain from the 80s, which is was James no Spader. Better, no better scumbag mm. in the 80s. And it was such a bizarre, this was right on the heels of Tough Turf, which in itself is, is a cult classic, yeah. you know, because that was a great a great film. Kim Richards was in that one, but this one was like a horror film. It was, it, it, it yeah. kind of turned into like a thriller slash horror. So it had that, that flair to it. And Lori Laughlin and, and her, uh, and her brother come to town and they're helping their, I guess their family with an amusement park, like you know, to build an amusement park. And Spader is like the leader of this like gang that's terrorizing <laughs> the, as the entire town, like petrified. Yeah. Cause they're Dutra. Like, his name is Dutra. His name is Dutra. <laughs> I just and remember he had, like, pl- he had like platinum blonde hair. Like That's it wasn't right. even like his normal blonde. It was like yeah. shockingly, it was like Rutger Hauer and Blade Runner. Like, yeah. This like, was this. Like yeah. White, this was, um, almost. and it was, it was different too, because he's used to playing the, like these kind of like yuppie, like stuck up rich yuppie kind of guys. Bags. Right. You know, like, like, <laughs> and, and, like pretty in pink and, you yeah. know, but here he was like a total, like, you know, he was like a, a redneck, yeah, you know, redneck like around a pickup truck. And, you know, it's like, yeah. But wow, my God, what a what a performance! And I just remember the keying the, the the car and all and all that yeah. stuff. He was just relentless in this film, and 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 again, a movie that <clears throat> I couldn't like, you can't really find it. Uh, you know, I try to look it up on YouTube. Man. I try to find it. Like I try to rent it a few times. It's 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 nowhere to be found. Yeah, well, it was on just, VHS briefly. I mean, obviously, yeah. that's where we saw it, but. Yeah, so uh, I only wow, saw it like once in the yeah I saw it once in the theater with you know you you know we we saw it together yeah. and then and then I think I rented it once after yeah. that and I think that's the only you know that's the it new the new kids the new kids like, yeah I, I've he's never going heard deep. It. Eric is going deep you you yeah. know for, for everyone listening I, I'm I'm going to be like the bubblegum pop of of the list and Eric is like going he's going really. Uh, he's going ham on this list, so I like it. The new kids with uh, James well, this Spader. Is the, well, because these were experiences yeah. that we had. You yeah, because that, that was the time when we were actually going to the theater and to we, see we didn't care to see just anything, and we and that, didn't and care what was playing. That's <laughs> and right. It shows. And it shows. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't believe I've never heard of this movie. I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking at yeah. screenshots of it. Uh, yeah. I, I don't even recognize the poster. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just a yeah. It's it's oh, really yeah. it's really hard to find. It's really so yeah. I, I, I guess it's really you know. I, I but think we saw it. Yeah, I think we I think we saw it the the one day it was in the theater. <laughs> yeah, the only day it was like we, we, were, we happened to be there the one day it screened. Probably it was like a special screening for a family <laughs> yeah. member. That was it, you know. Like yeah. you could you could count the you know you can count the the box office. Like I guess with, it's kind of like the uh, uh, the Teen Wolf to Back to the Future. Like Michael J. Fox. This was like you know Tough Turf was a little bit more popular. I guess you know yeah. it did it didn't do that well, but it, I mean it was more a little bit or more. Or even well-known. I mean this was just before Pretty in Pink too. I mean yeah. just before that before he was like Steph. Right. 
Yes, yeah, Steph. You know, yeah, which was like the ultimate, <laughs> ultimate prick, ultimate prick move was. Oh, was he's always he was the best in the eighties. He's just so, <laughs> oh, yeah. so, so great. So yeah. he was so smart. So That's why you love hate him. him. You just like, love to hate that guy. Yeah, he's just, yeah. Steph. <laughs> that girl so. is, was, and always will be not a <laughs> Steph. Yeah. Oh, okay, Andy, Andy, what do you got for number three? Are we staying in the yeah. horror no. genre, or are we, we are we, going we venturing we are out? Going, we're going animated. Oh, ah, fantastic. Um, uh oh, is there some overlap? Maybe no. I'm I'm, oh, I'm trying okay. to think. I'm, I what oh. one when you say animated cult, one movie comes to mind, but it might not be it. Yeah, me too. Me. Well, it's it's one of my favorite movies of all time, <laughs> just for the sheer artistry of it. But it it is from 1981, heavy metal based <laughs> on based on yeah. the uh, the heavy metal comic book for adults in uh, movie form. Uh, it was for adults, but only basically teenagers that took drugs watched it. Um, <laughs> so. I, it, it was anthology type movie with different art styles and stuff like that. But I, you know, I loved the, I loved the magazine to begin with, but just yeah. seeing the movie when, when you're 13 years old and you get to see animated <laughs> severe violence and nudity and heavy metal music yeah. all in the same, uh, it's, it's very, it wakes you up apart, wakes part of your brain up. Uh, but it, you know, it was perfect for young stoners to, uh, you know, oh turn on, God. tune in and drop out. What a uh, great choice. But the, yeah. uh, the, you know, it, it, it's it got cult status to this day. I mean, like, the, the, there's even, like, ripple effects into pop culture and stuff. Like, they were saying that uh, the, the big ship with the two stoner guys, you know, at the... Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to have a poster of that. I had the poster uh, yeah. of the ship. Yeah, that, they're that, saying, was, that, was, that was an uh, image. Dead yeah, Mouse. Etched. Dead Mouse, the DJ, made... Yeah. Took it from there, put, yeah. Put, put, uh, put the ears on that. I can whatever. see that. Yeah. Uh, voices of jo- Harold Ramis, John Candy, Gene Levy, many, many more. Uh, but the music, you know, Sabbath, Cheap Trick, uh, Stevie Nicks, Devo, Journey, Don Felder's got a couple of songs, uh, solo songs yeah. on there. One of them is called All of You, which is, love that song. But, you know, I it, it's just the imagery was just so cool. And uh, yeah. I absolutely so love it. That myself. Yeah. It, it's uh, it's in my top 20 of all time favorite movies, I think. Oh, just... Absolutely. What what a great choice. And and yep. that was the that was the, the movie. I'm, I'm like, that was the one, one I was thinking of. So. Um, there was uh, around that time. I mean, there was a lot of stuff like heavy traffic and uh, wizards and yeah, uh, Ralph Bakshi. Yeah, Ralph was Bakshi. Yeah. But I mean, there was there was a lot of adult kind of druggy type cartoons going on back then. But, American um, Pop. Remember that one? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but he- you know what? Fritz heavy metal had the, had the backing yeah. of of this great soundtrack too. So right, sep- separate the movie. The soundtrack is is just incredible as well. You got Cheap Trick in there as well. Yeah, Stevie uh, Nicks Steely, is on there. Stevie Nicks, yeah. Steely Dan, I think, is there too. Yeah. Um, Journey. just a, <laughs> open yeah, arms. So just a yeah. great <laughs> soundtrack. But then when you put it with like, with the anthology and the, and the thing about the anthology is all the, you know, like Andy, I think you said is all the art is different. It's different yeah. artistic takes. Yeah. And there's just one like the through magazine. line of this girl, you know, like meeting this kind of orb thing. And yeah. then the orb kind of tells the story about its, about its journeys and stuff. And, uh, my favorite part is, is Captain Stern is probably my yeah. favorite one. Stern. Stern. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing but a no down double dealing backstabbing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where that uh, cheap trick song reach out is, is playing in there when he's chasing him. And yeah. Um, and then, and then the one with heavy metal with the, with the fighter pot, was it the world war two fighter plane? Yeah. That uh, was creepy. Getting, like it's getting like pummeled and, and, yeah, he- the, and the song is yeah. playing. Don Guts Felder's version out. is playing. Yeah. Um, wow. That There's a like like choice. I said the the song all of you is the Don Felder song or whatever that's when they the two stoner yeah. guys the pilots take drugs and uh it, it just start, starts getting very psychedelic but um mm-hmm. that whole scene I just love like the sniffing whole... mounds of cocaine right like I, yeah. isn't it like mm-hmm. a vacuum or something and it's like Pluton- plutonium yeah, well, like one of the aliens yeah. has a has a an yeah. elephant nose and yeah, yeah snout and it's just like yeah. so they, they, they s- totally getting ripped and just like yeah. like flying through the stars <laughs> he says do you have do you have we have any of that plutonium nyborg left he's like yeah just one bag <laughs> and then the bag is like, <laughs> like a garbage bag yeah ah uh, what good a stuff. good choice dude well done. yeah the, the, well the done. cab driver is my favorite yeah because um, that's Harry actually King. i think it's taken from a, a graphic novel called a long tomorrow which was i think mobius is the artist yeah. artist and yeah. uh dan o'bannon the, the the guy that wrote alien uh wrote the story to that to that graphic novel yeah, so Harry, I think Harry a lot Canyon. of Blade Runners in that. A lot of uh, Fifth Element is in that. Mm-hmm. You know, they take taken from that. So yeah, yeah that's you know, that's very that's really influential. Cool. Yep, awesome. <clears throat> well, um, I'm gonna somewhat stay on that line. Not animated. Uh, this movie came out in 2001, and uh, once I tell you the title, maybe you'll get, make the connection then. But uh, this this movie is just every time I watch it, it's just funny. Uh, Super Troopers from 2001. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. The stoner humor is, is yeah. absolutely there. Uh, you know, written by the broken lizard comedy troupe. Um, and they just, they're, they're these guys that just really kind of go for broke with their humor. I mean, they're not afraid to be, be naked and, and uncomfortable situations and just over the top kind of humor, but really funny stuff too. And, uh, super troopers is just like, I, I didn't see it in the theater. I pro- probably caught it on cable and then absolutely just fell in love with it. Cause the guys just look like that. You know, you could tell they know each other. You could tell they're very comfortable working yeah. with each other and they, yeah. and they just, <laughs> You know that that there's that looseness there that kind of kind of you know makes you feel comfortable, and then you have like Brian Cox in there randomly as like the chief <laughs> of the you know, and he's like he's always put upon, he's always like yelling like you know stop it, Farva, or you know they're always that, throwing those kinds of actors into these things. Yeah, aren't and, they? and the fact that you Brian know, Cox that, did yeah. it as well, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, but right from the beginning, that the scene with the the scene with the pot when the kids are they're getting pulled over and they just the kid in the back just starts eating all the pot, all the weed. <laughs> and then he starts tripping and, and and they're like, they pull them over, but then they, they leave and the kids are like, Oh, okay. We got away with it. Then, then they back, the cop car backs up behind them yeah. and they're like, just sitting there running the siren. And they're like, we, we can't pull over any farther. We're already pulled over. It's just like, <laughs> uh, and then the meow scene, you know, uh, just so, so much great stuff. They, they did make a super troopers too, but not really necessary when right. this is all you've got. Well, and then they, a little, little tidbit yeah. is this was, a lot of this was filmed actually in in Westchester County, where where okay. Eric and yeah. I originally from on the yeah. uh, the the Connick State Parkway. Um, if you're from the area, you recognize because some of the exit signs like sneak in, and I'm like, oh, Baldwin Road, that's that's on the Taconic yeah, State Parkway, know. right, yeah. like right nearby. So, right. so that was nice that they they feel it was supposed to be like way upstate New York, but uh, they used used the area for it. So Super Troopers from 2001. Nice. Uh, this nice. one probably was the biggest biggest stretch. It, it was made for three million and made twenty three million. So that's kind of a, a modest hit. Mm-hmm. But what do you think? Certified cult? Yeah, I think sure. so. Yeah, certified cult film, absolutely. Huh? Cool. All right, number two. All right, we're, uh, this we're, one. We're marching. This one, I don't know if this is going to be an overlap for Andy, but it's Uh-oh. this one's for you, Andy. You um, think you know him? <laughs> <laughs> A uh, movie from 2000, and I, I guess I guess I, I don't know if it, it's not going to be a low budget cult classic, but it is a classic amongst uh, the the kind of the genre that it's in. Oh, it's uh, Guy Ritchie's Snatch. Uh, oh, this was fantastic. Yeah. This the those early films of Guy Ritchie. He was the basically the British Quentin Tarantino. I mean, he he was in, in that in that. That smart, you know, just that wise ass kind of, you know, the the, the humor, the, the the quick wit of of the characters, the you know, the way. Oh, Andy can tell you more, probably more about this film than I could. I mean, we, I, we, can, I we can go on and on about. Love I mean, that you movie. love this I love movie. Every second of that movie, especially uh, Turkish, well, it, it, it's just constantly <laughs> upset at Tommy. <laughs> Dennis, what's Dennis, what's up with those sausages? You have, you, have Dennis, you have Dennis Farina in there. Dennis as well. Farina and Brad yeah. Pitt, of course. The great Dennis um, Farina. And Brad Pitt is just absolutely Brick stellar top. in this in this movie. It's yeah. just phenomenal, and it's it, it's it's such a great caper film. Versus, and it's also a sports movie and dealing with boxing and all. Yeah. It's just it, it's all over the place. Boxing and yeah, uh, and it moves, was, moves just, like gangbusters too. It's it one of those does. films. It, that the just pacing. Keeps, yeah, you got to keep up with it. Yeah, the pacing of this film was great. I remember we had such a great time watching this in the theater. Andy and I, we we saw this, you know, back in the day. Yeah, and of course, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels was great yep. too. But I, I, this one edges out that one. I think for me, it had that uh, same so, thing. So, like so, I saw Pulp <clears throat> Fiction first, and then tried to go watch Reservoir Dogs. It's the same mm-hmm. thing. Like you watch Snatch yeah, first, and then exactly. go back. Yeah, it's like eh, yeah. You know, but um, <laughs> the character, every single character in Snatch is beautifully crafted, and yeah. Um, I, I, the humor is great. I think that that's Guy Ritchie's pinnacle. Like he's, he's oh, great, absolutely. but like he, that was his yeah. Mona Lisa. Yeah, and, and his and movies got, got t- bigger, more blockbuster, too. you know, because yeah. of, because of the pikey and, the, and you know, the way yeah. they speak, it's like, you don't even half understand yeah. what Brad Pitt's that's saying. That's right. Yeah. No, in the film. that's <laughs> the point. But, but even so, <laughs> even the other characters though, you got to yeah. really, yeah, you got to really yeah. tune in and, you know, cause they're, it's, it's, it's a film the, of dialects. Like the, just, exactly. And they speak so fast. Keep on your toes. The DVD had the actual, they had subtitles, Pikey subtitles. So he's actually saying things that make perfect sense. Perfect sense. Like he says, like, Mr. O'Neill, how's it going? He's like, um, otherwise I've been kind of a horse. He's, he's, he says, 
the weather's been <laughs> kind, but the horses, like, you know, he's like, you know, but you don't hear that at all. In yeah. this sentence, right? Yeah. So you, it, it cuts that off. Yeah. So you don't understand yeah. it. But it's it's perfect. It's 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 what a really a on four. It's got no fucking wheels. Oh my god! It, it's just it's a perfect film. And yeah. that from I just love that era, like the early two thousands. You know, yeah. it had at least there was something there that yeah. you could you know make claim that there was some great films that came out of that that decade as well. So yeah, that's my number two. Yeah, this, he, uh, that was that no. was the one that kind of I mean, lock lock stock was was kind of put him on the map and then snatch really. Yeah. That was kind of like, Oh wow. He made another film and it's even bet like, yeah. Kind of, kind yeah. of cashing in on, on the hopes that they had that he would do something like that. And he, and he right. did. And then he went on to Sherlock Holmes uh, eventually as well. Yeah. I mean, th- this movies just got bigger and bold, yeah, rock, you know, and more, and roll, more uh, special effects driven, more, you know, sort of big budget, you know, but this felt yeah, like, did, didn't he do Disney's Aladdin? Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. did actually. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, just some head scratchers there, but I mean, but yeah, but those early right. films are just they're just classic. Yeah, yeah so, absolutely. Yeah. Snatches yeah. a good one. Cer- yep. Certified cult, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, number uh, two. This have, leads yeah. leads perfectly into my next one. Uh, All right. Speaking of Brad Pitt and fighting. Ah, uh, 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 there you go. Uh, <laughs> nice. Listen, this was like my favorite movie like my favorite movie for like 15 years. Uh, it, it hit all the right spots. What, when it what, came... what, what, what movie is it? Oh, sorry. Uh, the, the fight club. Uh, oh, fight yeah. club. Yeah. You're not supposed to talk <laughs> yeah. about it. Um, you're not supposed to say it. Not supposed to mention it. See, uh, to... I already so, broke, I already broke the first rule. It's, uh, it hit, it hit all the right spots when it came out. Uh, it was like two or three years before nine 11. So like, here's the thing is like, um, it doesn't age well. Uh, and it's still a no? great movie, but I'll tell you why. It was like two or three years before 9-11, and this was, there was this like general malaise for the people in their late 20s and 30s who had just plugged into the rat race around that time. It was like mm-hmm. there was pre, it was like nothing was going on in the world. And like there mm-hmm. was a quote in the movie that um, he says, we're the middle children of history, man. No purpose, no place. We have no great war, no great depression. Mm-hmm. Our, our great war is a spiritual war. Our great depression is our lives. And it says, we've all been raised uh, uh, on television to believe that one day we're going to be millionaires and movie gods and rock stars, but we won't. And we're slowly learning that fact. It was just this, like, everybody was just going on with life at that time. It was like post Lewinsky scandal, pre 9-11. Mm-hmm. It was just this doldrum of, of stuff. And like, there was this, like, just, it, it brought up all these kind of, I, you need to live a little bit, you know, and it, it just, it, yeah. it, the way it was filmed, it was insanely beautifully filmed Fincher's camera work and the story yeah. twists and, and turns were unbelievable. But, you know, like I said, it doesn't age very well. It's like, it's, there's some problematic stuff in there. And yeah, I can't imagine any young person watching it 25 years later will understand why we were bummed that we didn't have no great war or great depression after living through the last 25 years. But and plus when you get older, your, your angst, kind of subsides a little bit, but, um, <laughs> but I mean like, yeah. you know, cause it, it's just, there's, there's so much stuff to worry about in the last 15, 20 years. Like yeah. you're watching this movie, people complaining that there's nothing bad going on, you know, it, it there's, it, it's, it's, it's weird, but, um, it was the first time I'd ever seen, um, you know, like when, uh, there's a shot when Ed Norton's on the phone and he's walking through his apartment and there's the, uh, the Ikea catalog prices uh. and stuff are showing up. Like I've never seen anything like that ever. Uh. And, yeah. uh, you know, everybody talks about the, uh, the, the, the ending of sixth sense, but this movie had one of the greatest reveals in history. You know, there's just the shot, this one shot. It's like, he says, we've just lost cabin pressure. And the, the bass in the theater goes, boo. And then <laughs> flashes back, yeah. flashes back, flashes back. And it was just perfectly laid, uh, laid out. Like it was just, yeah. oh, this is wonderful. Anyway, um, I remember Fox Searchlight uh, doing like a, a medley commercial uh, before movies that were coming out around that time. It's like, and it just, it started, it said like Fox Searchlight and you heard, I want you to hit me as hard as you can. And that's, and it said Fight Club and Soap. And then it had like all these other movies as well. And it just looks so dumb. Like, why would I want to see a movie about people fighting? And mm. when you're talking to somebody and say like, man, you got to see this movie fight club. And people are like, why would I want to see a bunch of people beating each other yeah. up? But you can't <laughs> yeah. really tell them what it's about. Like, cause you can't, yeah. you know, like it's... give me five minutes. I'll try to explain it. You know, it's, it, it's just such a great movie. Anyway, you, you, I'll, you, I'll have, you have to, ca- you have to cash in one of your trust me chips. Like just trust me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't, you just have to watch it. I, I remember when I saw it in the theater, I was gobsmacked yeah. from, from the, from the, from the moment with the penguin. Yeah. I was like, yeah. slide. Yeah, I was like, I'm I'm seeing something totally different here. Like, I like I was I, I didn't. It was disorienting, but still, yeah, you still could not figure out the ending. And 
it was just an amazing, uh, like harrowing trip Mm -hmm. through this person's psyche. And it got more and more intense as the movie went on and it got more and more claustrophobic and you felt like the movie closing in on you. Yeah. Um, And it was just so well done. It's one of those movies that people have, uh, I was tired at the end. I was like, yeah, Yeah. like in a good way. In a good way. I wanted to, I wanted to take a shower after I saw it. (laughs) (laughs) It's, it's, it's basically like uh, the main focus of the movie is toxic masculinity. Like it's just like uh, over, you know, testosterone and and everything. And, but like, and people have kind of glommed onto that and taken it as their like calling card and they're completely missing the point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's that it's like people that wear the Punisher logo. Uh, You know, it's like (laughs) you're, you're missing the point that this is, you know, I I don't know. It's with those bad guys that people say like the idolize, you know, like they're cool. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 I don't know, but I just thought it was absolutely brilliant and it's uh, it was uh, under the radar and it kind of found its wings on DVD sales and and stuff like that. Yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. The only thing I can say is his name was Robert Paulson. Yep. He had, he had, <laughs> yeah. well, I'm not going to say it. In Project Mayhem, we have no name. In Death, you do. This man's yeah. name was Robert Paulson. <laughs> that guy who says that is from, is in Manhunter. Uh, I forgot what his name is. Um, the guy, the guy who says he starts the, the yeah. Who, yeah, he's yeah. been in a couple, he was in a couple of series too, like some AMC series or something about yeah. a boxer. You know what's um, funny? I might've brought this up before, but he is, uh, he's in the first creep show movie in the old chief Woodenhead uh, yeah. thing as an Indian in as, Brown as the Indian. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's one more step and blam. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> coyote old chief Woodenhead. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Great, great choice, Andy. Wow. Yeah. That's probably the high, the highest profile uh, of the cult yeah. ones. I think that one uh, is definitely, um, and, and, and I think it was, born for cult status yeah you, even if i think even if it made a, a, a ton of money it was still just that subversive kind of film that people maybe some people don't want to admit they like but i remember seeing that at the yeah. end i was just like what what did i just see i have right. no idea the ride i just went on and i was happy for it there's like one come out of a, fi- a movie feeling satisfied like that like that because i don't try and second guess movie. i don't i never try and figure stuff out so i go on the ride we're still not going to say the ending but it you know, I, I, so I go on the ride um, unless a movie is so bad that it takes me out and I'm questioning it. I'm there. I'm just kind of like, yeah, I'm yeah, going yeah. with what you tell me, you know? Yeah. So I'm a mm-hmm. sucker. I'm there's, a chump when it comes to that. <laughs> there's so many, there's so many things that uh, upon multiple viewings that totally project the ending. Oh, like, of it's course. So but, obvious. So obvious. And, uh, um, but you go in dumb. Yeah. That, uh, yeah, yeah you, that, you, that, just, yeah. You, that you foreshadowing. Yes. Yeah, you is you is take there, it, you but, take it for what it is. Yep. yep. Uh, number two for me. This was a tough. I could have chose. I could have chose one of three, but I went with the last one. It is from 1992, uh, and it is Army of Darkness. Nice. The third in the Evil Dead trilogy. I knew he was uh, going to come up at from, some from point. Sam, yep. From before <laughs> Sam Raimi is who he was now, he was a schlocky, low budget, uh, brilliant director. Because the, what the guy could do with a budget. Uh, would amaze a lot of people and the innovations he had done with camera work in Evil Dead and Evil Dead Two, uh, nothing short of of you know ingenious. Mm-hmm. Um, and and Evil Dead Two, I I saw that on VHS. I think uh, me you know me and our friend Johnny. I think we got Eric involved. Seventy five percent horror, twenty five percent slapstick, and I didn't know what to make of it. I, I wanted I was watching a horror film, then I'm like, why am I laughing? Why is this funny? And it wasn't unintentionally funny. It was funny because it was supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, like, and so that it really, Evil Dead 2 really kind of grabbed me. I'm like, this is a very strange film because I'm supposed to be petrified, but I'm actually laughing at the end. And the character yeah. of Ash, Bruce Campbell, is just, it's just a joy. So, so campy. And, yeah, and, so campy. Like the guy's, great... a, the guy's a, a, a walking idiot, basically stumbles into, he can't get out of his own way almost. So they, when they, when they made Army of Darkness, they really amped it up. They amped up the, the. The Three Stooges, it was almost more like an Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Even the, even in the beginning credits, it was like Bruce Campbell versus yeah. the Army of Darkness was like the opening credit. I'm like, I'm, this is like watching an Abbott and Costello film at this point. So it, mm-hmm. you knew you were going to go in and and have fun with it. And, and that's was, what it was. It was it was 75% slapstick and 25% yeah. horror. They kind of reversed he reversed the formula. I you, you we, we rented it, I think. I think you guys saw it in the theater, Evil Dead, and then we rented it. 
No, I know. No, what... I only ever rented it. We only ever. I never saw it in a the theater. It was when oh, we okay. rented it. Yeah. So we we watched it together, right? Yeah. Or do you had seen it before me, and then Maybe you got me? Okay. Yeah. So we watched that. So I was amped for Army of Darkness because we we were talking about it and we knew that it was going to be a slightly bigger budget, and that it was going to be more of a, a just a, a, an adventure film, more more so than a horror thing. So we you know we we didn't know what to expect. But yeah, we, a bit of know, a head scratcher. It, that's a it's a great. It, it kind of reminds me of Monty Python a little bit too. It's, it yeah. has that kind of. It's got everything. It's, it's got, got a Terry Gilliam kind of feel to it, but it's like it, I think he, he might have been going for that. I don't know, but it's it's definitely uh, it's, it's, it's a got pleaser. Ray Harryhausen yeah. effects. It's got yeah, yeah. Bad, it's got bad beards. <laughs> yeah. It's got sh- it's got shit tons of blood. Yeah, uh, it's got the Oldsmobile. You know, it's right. just got all these different elements to it, and then it's got you know Bridget Fonda at the end and an uncredited cameo. <laughs> That's right. Hail That's to right. the king, baby. Yeah. Um, it's just, and again, Bruce Campbell just like anchoring it with his with his goofiness. And you know what the, the you know what the runtime of this film is? It's pretty it long. Eighty one minutes. Oh what! Wow. It's ba- it barely qualifies as a feature length film. The U.S. Wow. version is eighty one minutes. Feels longer though. Yeah, I remember it being long. I yeah. I, I, it, I actually re- well, rewatched it recently, and it felt longer. May, maybe it, you watched yeah. the international version, which was. 88 minutes. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. Oh, well. A whopping seven extra minutes. Of, it still doesn't make an hour and a half. Like you can watch that like three or four times in, in a day. Yeah. Um, uh, but just a great, a great, it's just so much fun that the, the two evil ashes, you know, good, bad. I'm the one with the shotgun. Yeah. There's a <laughs> lot, and, and the whole, that whole part with the Necronomicon, totally three stooges with the skeletons poking them in the eye and they're grabbing them. And yeah. the two, so, the so two much fingers. Coming. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, you got to hand it to Bruce Campbell for making an entire career on being Bruce Campbell. Yeah. Like he plays Bruce Campbell in every movie he's ever been in, you know, well, and, yeah. and, uh, but he, and he you owns know, it. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's almost like a different version of the guy who plays putty. Uh, I forget what his name is. Patrick but, Warburton. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, man, um, I remember that the, the skeletons, there's one shot of the skeletons marching and one of them is playing a bone like a flute yeah. and it's not even a, it's not a, there's not even holes in it it's just a bone <laughs> and it's making flute noises you just gotta go with it i just remember one of the skeletons grabbing a, a like a wench like some water yeah. like and i got plans for you girly and it's just like animatronic like skeleton like grabbing the girl and like doing like he's gonna do something to her it's like yeah. he's dragging Bizarre. her along yeah it's like such great stuff. Yeah, it was, it was so many different things. It was comedy, horror, slapstick, adventure, and yeah, uh, yeah. And then at the end, he goes. He, you know, he, he starts off back in time, and then he, uh, you know, in the American ending, he ends up back in his own time. In the alternate original ending, he overshoots, and he goes too yeah. far into the future, and it's like all like like post apocalyptic. And he's like, oh no! But uh, yeah. in the American version, he ends up back at S Mart and. Uh, one of the deadites comes comes after him, and he and he's got his skills. That's when he's like throwing the shotgun in the air, and he's riding on the cart. And he's just like un like like that shotgun yeah. has like twenty shells. He's like bang bang bang. Like he's no longer the, the you, you know you, you have to leave reality behind and, and check check your head and just have fun. This is absolutely my boom yeah, that's, stick. It, that's right, it. exactly. It, it's a it's a it's a it, it is a certified classic in shop, that in that shop way. Smart, yeah. Shop yeah. S smart. Yep. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you primitive screw heads. <laughs> All right. Oh, number goodness. one. Are we ready? Are we ready? Yeah, for number I'm one? ready. We have yeah. Ready. All right. I I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be. Yeah. Eric, what do you got? Well, what one? do you guys think? <laughs> do, uh, I, do I even need to? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to think it's something that we saw together. Okay. That's all I can yeah. say. That's all I know. I, I can't even guess, Eric. Oh, I, okay. I, you're you're pulling out Japanese movies here. Yeah, I, he's okay. he's made it difficult. <laughs> it, there's no trajectory to really plot out here. All right. Um, well, no, it's not. It's actually well known, and it's probably the Mac Daddy of of so bad it's good movies. And I'm just gonna go with it. And for my number one all time favorite cult film is Flash Gordon. Oh, wow! Yes. Thank from you. 1980. For, and there you go. Uh, Thank you for picking that because it was on my list, and I had to to clip it. Uh, there you I go. Because you know. Wow. I, Love that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, you can't, you know, <laughs> it's like Army of Dark. I was like, exactly what Dean said about Flash Gordon is very much that. In fact, more so. And we, we had a blast with that film. Oh, yeah. Didn't we? 
I mean, come uh-huh. on, you know, it's just, a f- it's just fun to watch. The music's great. It inspired a lot of, you know, different people like Taika Waititi's into it and, you know, that kind of thing. Dora Ragnarok is, was born out of that, that film. It was so colorful. So, yeah. so much fun. Yeah. So, ba- but it's so bad, but it's so, it's so, fun. you know, my, my I son. Think, got- I never think of it as bad though. I just think of it as a great, actually a great film. It, Be- it, it, well, it is what it is. I mean, it, yeah. it does serve a purpose, right? Yeah. I and mean, I even got my oldest son into it. Like this, the first time he watched it, he, he just loved it on, uh, from the get go. He's like, I love this movie. And I'm like, yeah, it's just, it is what it is. And it just, it doesn't apologize for it. Yeah. It doesn't, <laughs> you know, there's, it no, doesn't, there's you know, no winking at the camera. It is. That's right. We are, that's right. Yeah. this is who we are. This is what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, they were trying to cash in on the whole star Wars craze. So this was taking, right. taking it seriously, but with the art deco throwback, so, art style of the comics yeah but the production you know. design on this thing that you know yeah. just yeah just those the you know the costumes the you know uh, timothy dalton yeah prince Karen, and we and we talked about this team it's like these characters these actors they really they did they gave it their all yeah yeah it's like you shakespeare know, like peter weingard as, as clitus and, and 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 of course the great you know uh, max von sydow i mean come yeah, on brian you blessed know, like, as Hawkman. yeah man yeah yeah, you know, it just the, it was it was just it's just a great a great watch. And there were scenes uh, in that movie you know. when it came out. Uh, I was very young, and uh, it, it scared me to death. The scene where the scientist is getting his memories taken, and yeah, yeah. it just freaked me out. When they I was went there. It, it, yeah. that was a dark yeah. scene. I mean, yeah. for all its camp and for all its cult, you know, whatever it they you know that was a horrible scene, <laughs> a pretty yeah. horrific scene, and and it really yeah got to you. Yeah, and every so time I, you know, every so. time I reach into some sort of hole in nature, <laughs> I'm always thinking. You, and, be and I know I know uh, Alex Second Ross, down, the famous uh, comic book artist, is a huge fan of that. Andy, you yeah. know this, yeah. right? We we yeah. talked about this, and that's his favorite film because I, what did he say about it? Like he said that he because Flash Gordon is like the the perfect hero, right? Yeah. Is that that's the reason he likes it? I mean, yeah, what, and just the colors, and uh, it, I think it would just hit the perfect time for him too. It's in yeah. childhood, so yeah, it, yeah, he painted yeah. the. Uh, the special edition DVD box. Like he mm-hmm. did a painting of it. It's really gorgeous. Yeah. And I, 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 Lucas was trying to get a, a Flash Gordon film made and he couldn't. That's yeah, what, that's he, what he, he Star Wars. secure the rights. Yeah. Thank you. Dino De Laurentiis. But, but, I mean, was, but oddly enough, yeah, Dino De Laurentiis can get it oddly enough though. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the thing of it is, is like he actually uh, stole, uh, well, that's when he stole the rights to Dune as well. Cause that other guy, that Chilean director was supposed to have made Dune and that big, weird vision of his and and, and but that Jarwalski or Jar, yeah. Jar- 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 and because Jar- that movie didn't get made all these other films came out as a result of that Flash Gordon is definitely one of those films if you look at the costume design a lot of those costume designs were drawn by Mobius and yeah. and you know so artists of that ill you know they were all they all worked they were all supposed to work on that film hmm. And they did it, and and there would have been, there probably would not have been an Alien, a Blade Runner, or a Flash Gordon, or even a Star Wars. I don't think Lucas wouldn't even touch Star Star Wars if that movie had been made yeah. at that point. Yeah. The time. original do, the Can original about his, his original version. But yeah. Dino De Laurentiis came and he made the David Lynch version, which of course that's a, that's its own thing. <laughs> <laughs> had had we ever seen that? Could be a cult. But it is. Cult. I yeah. I, I revisited it. I you know so yeah. Had we ever so, seen a rock band do a soundtrack to a sci-fi movie at that up to that point? Um, no, no. It, that movie wouldn't exist without the Queen soundtrack. Oh, absolutely! I mean, I, like, that was the, the very first vinyl I ever bought with my the, own uh, money, like, and yeah. the vinyl had <laughs> clips from the movie. I'd never seen yeah. that either. Like it, it, you know, right. it, it starts with that sound. Yeah, yeah. Yep. and a uh, quote from. There's only the, actually uh, one. It's probably just like two songs, actual songs on the soundtrack, and the rest yeah. is just score. But Freddie Mercury and doing these vocals and stuff. vocalizations, yeah. right? But it's great stuff. I, you know, I, I you know. do have to point out one really big blooper that really bothers me in this film, though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, I got to give it a little bit of crap. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, there's the whole off-screen, you know, Clytus and, and, and Ming are talking. And, you know, Ming Hot is like, Clytus, I'm bored. What, what plaything do you have to offer me? And Clytus says, oh, the, you know, the obscure body in the SK system there, you know, and how it's referred to it as uh, Earth, right? Yeah. And then they say, okay, we'll go ahead and just, we'll destroy this Earth. And then he pushes a button that says Earthquake. <laughs> how does he have a button that says Earthquake if they're ma- they didn't even know what Earth was, but they've got a button 
hey. to make an earthquake. Hot hail, right? Hot hail. Like, hot like, hail. Oh, like, that's like, fine. In. Hot hail you can have anywhere, but specifically <laughs> an earthquake yeah. for a planet that you are not aware of and you've got a dedicated You're not, you're not supposed with, to question it. That's the point. Yeah. That's, that's what's so fun that's about the, the movie. I'm, I'm, I'm very kind to it. For yeah, me, but, like, but, but that's the thing, though. It's like you don't, you know... I, I, I'm, my favorite quote is good morning. Are you injured? I'm, I'm like Topol, yeah. you know, like I, cause I wake up my sons for school, like Jacob's for school. Good morning. Are you getting, he's, he's just oh, shaking his head. Like, come on with that God already. Damn. You know, <laughs> what that's was a great the, choice. Yeah. The great name choice of, Flash Gordon. um, yeah. not, not the main girl, but the other girl that's in like the Ming's fantasy daughter. outfit. Ming's daughter yeah. looks like Aura. she stepped, Aura. She, she stepped out of a, uh, a Frazetta painting, like she yeah. looks. Or Nella Muti is her name. Yeah. Her face yeah. looks like she was painted by Frank yeah, Frazetta. She, yeah. yeah, she. That, well, the movie. Let's let's be not honest. The, the movie. Worms, not the ball worms. The the movie is overtly, you know, sexual. extremely yeah. sexual. Sure. Oh, I mean, like every every scene in that movie is is suggestive. <laughs> you know, just like, but, a, this, just this, like this, the classic. Again, uh, but that was part of the fun of it as, as a as a young, you know, as a teenager growing up, because that you know we were coming into that right we were you, you know go. stepping away so to, from so to speak yeah pretty you know we were we were looking for that kind of thing right we were you know so in this Look movie came Andy's gave face. it to us in spades whether we understood it or not can you say at that? the time <laughs> it, it you know whatever but <laughs> but now you watch it i'm like holy crap how yeah. ridiculous it, 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 is. it is every every very scene com- is just very comic ri- booky very you <laughs> yeah. know it, it had those sexual <laughs> overtones but not in a yeah. not in an overly a- adult way but it was just right. kind of like you know yeah beautiful women yeah. a lot of a lot of satin a lot of spandex mm-hmm. and i read I, uh, I watched and, the, and, that uh, on, and that was on sam j jones yeah yeah I watched yeah. the, the making of it and it was supposed to be a Nicholas Rogue movie, the guy that did Man Who Fell to Earth and yeah. like these really like eccentric films. It was supposed to be like really serious and I'm like I can't see it any other way than what it yeah, is. I'm glad we got what we got. The 1930s yeah. comic is very, very much that and the old yeah. serials is very much this film. Like it's the same style, Absolutely. same kind of thing and you can't, you can't do it any other way. We were, so I, yeah. I just watched it like probably about two or three years ago and it was just, yeah. you know, I was trying to think of when am I going to let my, my, my daughter see it. And I was just thinking like, would she accept this, um, <laughs> like the, the, the special effects and stuff like that? Cause it's like yeah. the, these high velocity, like, uh, sky war things happening on, and it just keeps cutting back to Flash Gordon on the scooter, like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just you know, and, and all the things that we've, been, that, that we've been making fun of, like the book of Boba Fett, like the street, oh, yeah. you know, the tree right. chase, and that, yeah. like, you could watch Flash Gordon and you you make those references, and perhaps yeah. they were going for that, maybe I don't know. Uh, Who knows? That, that, but yeah, you know, Flash Gordon's rocket scooter looks like a it looks like a freaking treadmill. It's yeah. really what it looks like. It looks like a treadmill at <laughs> Planet Fitness. <laughs> It does. It does. It does. He's like holding it, on. I'm expecting yeah. him like, oh, I already walked four miles while I crossed the That's galaxy. Right. He's... And it, it's just, it's very Wizard of Oz <laughs> as well. You know, the, you know, yeah. the, the Hawkmen look like the winged monkeys, the same yeah. effect, you know, like, the, you know, when they were all flocking in the sky. And I mean, it was just, it's just great. It's just, it's like it's just the sky looks like a lot of fun with it. Dumping laundry <clears throat> detergent into a... That's it, into water. <laughs> and then yeah. throwing blue blue food coloring or orange There you go. In. Yep. Oh, boy. All right. That is your number one, Flash That's Gordon. Number one. Yep. What a great choice. Andy. Yeah. I'm going... Oh, can, you to- can you top that? No, I can't. I, <laughs> for real. Uh, the I'm going obscure. This is my favorite. Um, right. And I, I watch this movie once a year, usually around Halloween. And I don't know if anybody has seen this or not, but I... Uh, it is from 1986, a movie called Trick or Treat. It was originally titled Ragman. Uh, ah. it, it starred uh, Mark Price, the guy who played Skippy on Family Ties. Mm-hmm. And it, it came out during the uh, the whole satanic panic thing in the mid-80s. And the movie was about a teenage metalhead named Eddie who uh, is bullied by jocks. Uh, so he plays his heavy metal records backwards to summon a <laughs> demon-like Satan-worshipping metal singer to seek revenge on them, you know, like we all did. That's right. Uh, that's, well, that's based on real life back then. I mean, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's what was happening. Uh, there, there's there's cameos. <laughs> this is a documentary. Uh, cameos in the movie by Gene Simmons from Kiss, who plays like Wolfman Jack, basically on a, a radio DJ, and Ozzy Osbourne plays a Christian TV evangelist that was talking <laughs> out against heavy metal. Yeah. Um, Typecasting. Yeah. Uh, the 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 thing is, is like there there's a very very personal story here, and it's about a long-haired metalhead who keeps getting bullied and like he finds his tribe in heavy metal music and the reason that i loved it so much as a kid is that it wasn't like you know a kid who liked some 
band called heavy metal band for some movie like there's seems like like it's just the camera is just passing by all of these posters and there's anthrax and metallica and megadeth like all the posters i had and his mom's flipping through the records later on and you know and you just sees you know, you, she sees like slayer and all this stuff it's like it, it was like i don't know how they got the rights to show all this stuff and, but um it, it just felt like who all of us metalhead kids were back in the 80s and um it, 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 I, i'm not gonna lie there was something cool about you know, playing records backwards and to think that like I could get back at jocks by doing that. Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't absolutely. Care if, I don't yeah. care if it's summoning Satan, just, you know, <laughs> yeah, just get um, them. Take but, them down. Uh, you know, there's a, uh, it's a, the, the demon that pops out is this uh, rock and roll guy named Sammy Kerr, who was like the Ozzy Osbourne, but super satanic of the time. It's, fa- yeah. it's a fictional character, but uh, the music that he played was uh, recorded and written by a band called Fastway, uh, which mm. had uh, a guy from uh, Motorhead, but, the singer of Fast Away, this heavy metal singer in this movie, went on to form the band Flogging Molly, and it's okay. so funny because when you, I, I'm a huge Flogging Molly fan, and I I had no idea I, oh. I it's like uh, that it was the same guy, and but he's singing the, that like '80s like yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> he's not he's not doing the uh, the Flogging Molly type stuff, but like anyway, so it it, it I love the movie so much, and again, um, it's uh, a cult in the in the horror. Of, uh, category, but uh, I watch the movie like once a year because I just love it so much. And um, that's great. I it probably had a budget of you know forty dollars, and most of that was <laughs> on makeup and um, booze for Ozzy. Yeah, sort of, <laughs> just just a line of cocaine for him. Um, yeah, so I mean, like it, it has some cool effects too. Like the guy uh, Sammy Kerr, like he goes through electricity and like, there's this woman on the TV who's like ta, 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 screaming about heavy metal music, or whatever. And he like wow. smears the television and she screams. Oh no, no, that was Ozzy. He like does the thing. And like the people are feeling it. There's like this old lady, like pointing at him, like at, at the TV, like heavy metal music is going to the whatever kids. And he reaches into the TV and pulls her out of the TV. And she's the, she's the size of what she was on TV. Oh, on so the he's, TV? Holding, he's holding a little burnt old lady. <laughs> Um, but, uh, I don't know. Mike TV. The, um, (laughs) the acting is, is superb. I mean, like that's, I love Mark price in that role. I think it was really, really good. And, um, you know, had, I I forgot what the name of the actor was the bully, but he was like a bully that was a bully in every movie in the eighties. Like the, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Johnny and, uh, karate kid, you know, there's, there's two or three actors. Yeah. William William Zabka. Yeah. Um, Yeah. guy. But yeah, it was called Trick or Treat. It was originally called Ragman because that was his nickname. They call him Ragman because he dressed like you know, like a like a burnout. But um, they named, they switched it to Trick or Treat in America, which um, just doesn't make any sense. I guess it's around Halloween, but there's no, you know. And then they, there was the movie later on, Trick or Treat, that has another cult following. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, with the, the little yeah. guy in the the little uh, the mask or whatever yeah, running it's, around. It's, his... it's funny all the. Pl- all the pearl clutching that was going on about, Oh, Satan is in the music. And yep. <laughs> when you look back yeah. on it now, it's like real, like really like yeah. Ozzy, <laughs> Ozzy, he yeah. had, a, he had a TV show on MTV about him and his family. And he's just, you know, he, he went from like the most reviled Satanist and, and threat to civilization. to You know, hey, Sharon, you know, yeah. like, like the yeah. guy couldn't find yeah. his slippers. He, got, right. he was invited to the president's dinner. George W. Bush was like, Ozzy Osbourne's here, you know, because uh, of the, <laughs> the Osbourne show. But I mean, yeah, the satanic panic stuff, like uh, Judas Priest got put on trial for backmasking and they didn't uh. even do it. And they they had to, they like made him sing his lyrics backwards to make it sound like in court. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, Ozzy got sued because of the lyric in Suicide Paranoid. Solution, right? Or it was yeah. the song yeah, Suicide Solution. Suicide Solution, which is about yeah. alcohol. But um, there was a, like in the song uh, Paranoid, he says, I tell you to enjoy life. I wish I could, but it's too late. A parent sued him because she thought that he said, I tell you to end your life, not enjoy mm-hmm. life. Yeah. And, but it's like that that's all it took to have. Of course, uh, yeah. A court court date back then, you know. But and that it started just... with labeling. That started with with uh, warning stickers on music yeah. and all that kind of crazy <laughs> yeah. stuff. Oh, yep. you know what, Ozzy? Come on. And it's fun. That's ironic that George Bush would would invite him because wasn't he banned from the Alamo for peeing on the Alamo? Yeah. Well, he was like I mean, thrown this... out of like Texas, like he can't go to Texas or something because he peed on the Alamo. <laughs> this was this was prime Come on, man, Davy Crockett. This is when he was yeah, the most. Ozzie popular of the Osborne's TV show. And he was, he was next, he lived next door to Pat Boone. 
and uh, mm. and put out a record, <laughs> put a record out with him. Or, or yeah, no, yeah, he yeah, did a metal yeah. He did a metal yeah, he album. Did that, he's wearing the leather leather vest. Yeah. Yeah. That boom. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, well, that's, well, that's a good choice. Uh, you know, yeah. that that's uh, that's your number one trick or treat. Yep. No, All right, favorite. my number one is is a personal favorite of mine too, and it, and I, it's number one because I really connected to the film. Uh, I found like a, a a voice that I felt was could was speaking for me, uh, and connecting to to where my life was at the time. And it's from 1994, and the movie's Clerks. Okay. Like Kevin Smith. Oh yeah, that's a great. And if one. you've ever yeah. worked in retail, <laughs> oh yeah, people, like you can immediately identify with. Clerks. We did. Yep. And, and, I felt at you know at the time that movie was talking to me because it talked about the things that people talk about in real life, you know, yeah. and and a lot of those scenes scenes just seemed really realistic. For instance, like when when they're talk, when they're having to talk about the Death Stars, like oh these guys are independent contractors and they didn't have any, and then the customer like gets involved, like they ask him, yep. he's like oh well I would, I did work for a mafia guy and I decided not to do it because that guy got killed, you know, <laughs> like like just the 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 realness of the interactions. Yeah. Um, you know, the guy that's kind of lost, he's in, in his, you know, mid twenties or, or late twenties and he's, and he's just kind of lost. He doesn't know what he's doing with his life. And I, you know, kind of right. felt that way at that point. It was kind of like, I was in the same, like same drifting area. It's like, you kind of don't know. And you're working a job and you're kind of showing up and it's like, you know, you're not, but, you're not supposed you to be your there. It's your day book. off, and you're like, you know how that feels when you get yeah. called in, and it's, you're supposed to be your day off, and exactly. you're like, oh, you and, know. but you have your buddy with you that like, like is kind of going through it with you, like you're yep. both miserable together, but at least you've got somebody to be miserable with. Yeah. Uh, the introduction of of Jay and Silent Bob, you yeah. know, uh, Berserker, yeah. great yeah. scene. Um, and it's just yeah, and then Randall, it just like the guy that just does not give a shit about anything, and just like. <laughs> especially in clerk like clerks 2 is a little different of a little a little bit of a different film but in clerks he's just like he's brutal he's yeah, just I, absolutely <laughs> brutal to everybody even like he tells it like it is even to his best friend but but that's like his defense mechanism as well yeah you know he's, he's afraid listing that off, he's gonna leave him listing off porn tape say to, yeah. to, to, porn tapes in front of a kid you know you know what yeah. the funny thing about that scene is in in real life he couldn't he would not do that scene in front of that kid they had to film it separately he goes i don't i don't feel comfortable saying this in front of a child well good for him yeah, yeah. So yeah they've had those cutaways yeah. of the woman holding the baby <laughs> he's like yeah, yeah i want to call right. in this order hey <laughs> and he just they, goes through like the worst of the worst i remember titles. specifically that was the first movie i'd ever heard of people talking about pop culture other movies i'd never yeah. heard conversations yeah. about other movies yeah. in a movie before yeah and it was so great because that was what it was. it was like that's the kind of stuff i talk about right like when you're at work you talk yeah. about right you don't talk about these these highfalutin things you talk about star wars where these guys are independent contractors you talk about you know uh just all these different things the whole scene with the chulies gum with the guy who has the, the, the lung and he puts it on the counter and he's making everybody buy the gum instead of the cigarettes <laughs> and he's like the chew he's like the gum rep yeah, so it's just a lot of, lot of you know. Yeah, we we playing, we, we, playing we, hockey we, on the roof. You know, we've encountered some uh, some some winners in our day. Yeah, so you if, know, you've, if you've worked various, a retail, an hourly yeah. retail job, yep. you you can identify <laughs> with this film, even if you never worked at a quick stop. Yeah. Um, so for me, it just kind of hit, and then and then Kevin. I mean, this kind of opened the doors for Kevin Smith with his whole. He created his own universe of characters that Jane yeah. Silent Bob would, would drift right. through. You know, chasing Amy, mall rats. He, he, these characters would just keep showing up everywhere, and, and he kind of made his he made his own cottage industry of being Kevin Smith and being a comic book geek, and parlayed that into his show, into a show, parlayed that into a comic book store, his career, and right mm -hmm. he ended up writing comics. Right, he wrote Dare, some Daredevil runs, he wrote some Superman runs, I think. Yeah, um, so it's so weird really that he's kinda, he's 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 part stoner. He's full stoner. You know, he ain't part yeah, full he's, stone. I mean, he's just no. But I'm just saying, like part stoner, like foul mouth, irreverent, you know. And then on the on the other hand, he's just a total geek. Yeah, you know, yeah. like he's just you know so into pop culture and, yeah, and like comics Mallrats, and you know, Rats yeah. is like the spiritual sequel. Even right. even though even though Clerks has sequels, yeah, Mall Rats is another one too that's just like you know, and might, yeah. it might even be more obscure because from what I understand, you can't really even get Mall Rats anywhere. It does you never see it on streaming. Rarely, mm -hmm. uh, occasionally you do. Um, little mall rats, a little more subversive, but yeah. he, um, great, he great was one of the first around. guys to like make being a geek a profession. Yeah. Yeah. Like he brought in like the Chris Hardwicks and all the guys from Nerdist and all that stuff or whatever. He, you know, wasn't really a career choice before Kevin Smith, you know, right. yeah, he, he made wore it a career on, he choice. Wore it on his sleeve. Yeah. He wore his, his love of comic books and, and 
Star Wars and, and all that kind of stuff. He well, just was, was making proud that about it. just saying then saying I could make a film doing talking about this kind of stuff right. and just like you know the uh, filmmakers like that and Richard Linklater and like he was inspired right. by him when he did uh, you know uh, you know Days and Confused right. and he did you know that almost made the list slacker like his for his first movie which was about totally nothing it was just just people just talking you know just going from one group of people to another and it just yeah. it didn't go in, you know there was no plot whatsoever so kevin smith's like i can do this yeah and just do and and we totally related to that just came at the right time when yeah. we just jumped on board with that and now we're, we're in this pop cultural thing where you know that's a thing now yeah. you, like like, you know, like so. they say, like they say it, it hit me in the feels <laughs> you hit me hit me right in the feels yeah. All right. So that's our number one. We we went through our list, but we like we said, we've got a bonus. As we as we wind this this episode down, we we all picked one. There could be more. I only got mm. I only wrote one, but we picked that one cult film that we just can't connect with. We can't. Yeah. For one a, a reason or another, just can't get behind it, and it's probably something that's very popular. So, uh, Eric, what okay. what cult film you, can't, you just you just can't get behind it. What's the well, big deal? He, what's the I mean, big deal with it? I mean, what's the, I could you know, say several of his films. Oh, okay. Would 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 fall into that category, but yet I'm compelled to watch his work. And okay, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a cult list without David Cronenberg. Oh, okay. So, true. Um, but there was one movie in particular that you know you talk about all the body horror stuff that he has done. You know, uh -huh. that's real deeply disturbing stuff. Videodrome and The Fly and. Yeah, scanners and all this kind of stuff and it's just you know you see it once and you're just kind of like it's so disturbing you just don't want to revisit that again uh -huh. too soon you know but then you end up do, you know you, you go back but the one movie that really got to me which, which was told was crash yeah. in 1996 which was james spader and holly hunter and it was based on a novel where people go, get into car crashes and then they have sex they get turned on by it mm -hmm. and so turned on by it that they just you know, to just do it right then and there. Like they, they could, they could be like, you know, bloody and yep. they could break their back or whatever. And, but they'd still, the adrenaline rush of, of, of a car crash turns them on so much that that that's the thing. So it was deeply disturbing. I watched yeah. it once and I'm just like, I, what am I watching here? Yeah. This once was crazy. enough for me with that as well. This is Eli crazy. Elias Coteus yeah. was in that too. Yeah. And it was just, and it was a movie that I know it was banned for even for him. Like he's, he's very, he's deeply controversial to begin with, but it's like, he, you know, I know it was banned in certain markets because it was just so, just so disturbing. And, I know, yeah, and now he's working like on a new one. Broken legs or like back, yeah. like, like a just back brace. Really, and, I'm like, why, why right. would anybody want to make this? And why, you know, didn't it win a lot like, of awards? It it, 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 did. It, it 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 won some acclaim, but I guess it, it's because of the psychological aspect of it, yeah. whatever, whatever it may be, but it's just not something that I care to revisit. Yeah. <laughs> not, ever not, to again. Be not to be confused with you the know, other movie called the Crash, which came Oscar out a few Ward, years later. You know, yeah, which, best picture okay. winner. No, that's not the same and, film. And, no. You know, I didn't that, no, I didn't see uh, Oddly enough, it's the same title and, and not too many years apart. Yeah, but, but this this thing was just yeah. like I even sure. for David Cronenberg, I'm like, this is just yeah. I have no desire Unsettling. to ever see this again. <laughs> so, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Crash yeah. is the one that gets a, th yep. a thumbs down from Eric. Andy, what do you yep. got? That, that's just not. I'm going to get hell for this. And especially a couple of my friends that I know listen to the podcast are going to message me immediately. Okay. Um, I could never get into Boondock Saints. <laughs> oh. oh. Okay. Uh, everybody okay. I know as a cult movie, like will say that in their top 10. And I, I've seen the movie three or four times and I, it's fine. It's fine. I just don't mm -hmm. understand the, the acclaim and the, yeah, it's strange. The, the, the people that are boondock saints fans are fans. Like there's no casual yeah. boondocks, you know, fa a fan. So, um, I just, uh, I, I don't hate it. I just don't love it. I'm, I'm indifferent about it. And I think that that's probably worse. I would rather hate something. Yeah. Oh. No, yeah, uh, no reaction is worse than than loving or hating. Well, I yeah. mean, Willem Dafoe makes that movie. He's just so out there. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you, you yeah. would think he was auditioning for Joker at that point, like with with the faces and just the. It just feels uh, everything's over the top, and it's not yeah. deserved to me. I it, I don't know. It, it just didn't feel. It, it kind of goes into like fantastical stuff, even though it's real. It's real, meaning like, yeah, like they're jumping off a roof. And then landing on the guy like five stories down, so to break his fall. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, and it's hard to understand them too when they're talking. Uh, Norman yeah. Reedus and uh, Sean Patrick Flannery, like they have yeah. this, their their Irish accent is so heavy that I'm, I'm, when I was watching, I'm like, I really almost don't even know what they're saying at this point. Yeah. Uh, go 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 for go for Willem Dafoe and stay for mm-hmm. Willem Dafoe. He's, I'm, an, you know, I'm old Andy on it. I think I've seen it a, a couple of times and I just, you know, I could take it or leave it. Yeah, it's thing. okay. It's, it's just not, you know, like but not, people do. I know there are people that rave about this film and yeah. just, you know, yeah. A lot, a lot of sizzle, no steak. Yeah. That's what I think that's what Andy's saying. A lot mm-hmm. of sizzle. Where's the yeah. beef? All right. All right. Okay. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to get dragged because I'm really, I'm really going after one of the sacred cows that I never never understood i never got into it i couldn't i I can't i I just don't it's just not for me i respect it but rocky horror picture show does nothing for me (laughs) i was waiting for that what's that yeah i was waiting for that okay Mm -hmm. you you, you knew that was it i i I figured somebody would pick it yeah okay yeah are are you are you a rocky horror fan uh no uh but but um you you sounded angry i I was like oh oh, no 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 no. um (laughs) i uh i'm Eric and I uh, have many friends that did uh, that do or did mm-hmm. for a very long time did uh, the the show like did uh, acted it out and stuff like that. And I yeah. think the Kelly, problem- Kelly got it was yeah. into it for a while. Her friend Cat and, and and her other friend and you know they yeah they got into that. There was that whole like audience thing. participation. Yeah, or, yeah. I, I, but they I would think... dress up in costume and reenact the, the entire. Yeah, so it was a thing. But we would go I, hang out. So <laughs> I, I after a while after seeing your friends do the same thing every Saturday or whatever. You just kind of like, it just, the movie just starts becoming part of the furniture and stuff like that. And there was, it it was just there, but then like 10 years later, 12 years later, something like that. I um, somehow got a hold of like a a 40th anniversary DVD of it or something like that. And I threw it on just to see if I, I don't even know why I threw it on, Mm -hmm. but uh, the scene where Tim Curry shows up, and he, the elevator comes up and he turns around and starts walking toward the camera. I got goosebumps. Like he is yeah. so iconic in that yes. movie. The movie is ridiculous. Everybody yes. knows it's ridiculous and it's whatever, but a bit like he, he, he is a, almost a superhero force to and, be reckoned with. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and it, it's it, <laughs> like when he turns around and he, he's just, he's, he, he's got power in that movie. Uh-huh. And um, I, I, it, it was really cool. And I, I guess, I guess I was just me watching it myself. I was, my guard was down and everything else, but I just really appreciated the movie seeing it that day. But mm-hmm. when it was in the middle of, of it, I was just like, man, I, I got to get yeah. out of here. Yeah, no, I, I totally, I totally respect the impact it's had on popular culture and, and all that. But yeah, when I watch, I'm like, uh, like, okay, I, I get it's campy and, you know, yeah. uh, you know, the whole audience participation, maybe that makes it something different, you know, but that is the thing. Life of its own. That's what it is. But it did that. And Kelly um, and my wife will tell you this. And she she'll she refuses to watch it like on home like we you know because I we got the DVD as well or the yeah. Blu-ray and she, and it's like she's like I don't want to watch that because we have to go yeah to the seat to see it in the experience theater to experience it. the whole thing. That's, that's what, what that's is. what that's Maybe what that's I'm what into. It it's not the film, you know. So I'm watching it because it's a you know I want to see what the big deal about the film is, and mm-hmm. it, there's really no big deal about the film because the film is horrible. Yeah, you yeah. know. But it's just. You know, it's it's, it's yeah, just it became a thing. this other. It became this other yeah, thing. This That's whole, not yeah. originally what it was, but it just right <clears throat> became yeah. this thing. So I, I just for some reason just could never connect to it again. Nothing, uh, nothing against it. It's a great film, but no, it's a it's a it's a, it's a valid choice. Yeah, yeah, there's another like movie. Yeah, one of my other choices was this other movie called uh, Repo: The Genetic Opera, which is was supposed to be yeah uh, a Rocky Horror type movie. They like planned for it to be a Rocky Horror type movie, and it's just garbage. Like and. <laughs> they they the, the horror conventions they would have like a showing at midnight or whatever and it, they were trying so hard to make it a thing and you know it, it was you just can't force it it was garbage you know yeah. so you yeah know, I never watched that yeah you can't, you can't make something like that happen it, it was it was organic and 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 yeah you know exclusive to Rocky Horror like you don't see any other there hasn't really been another movie where it's like that where people come like to that extent because it was a thing unto itself and you can't yeah purposefully try and re force that on be, Oh yeah. Come and get dressed up and come do this. And you know, it's like, nah, you know, when, when it happens organically, that's when it's something special. So. Right. Um, yeah. Cool. Yep. Um, that's going to do it for this episode. We, we have gone through our top five cult films of all time. 
uh, some uh, on the on the more popular edge, some in the middle, and some that uh, are are maybe worth checking out if you've never heard of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, especially for Eric's uh, selection house, we're going to put a link in the show notes uh, to a trailer. Maybe maybe I'll pick one or two other trailers. I'll probably I'll, get I'll a do, lot of I'll, heat and say, you know, probably I'm I'm probably making a bigger. It's 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 a horrible film. I'm going to put it out there. It's just not a movie that you're going to be okay, like. Well, you're going to be like, what the hell am I watching here? But it's just that bizarre. Well, so then there you go. If nothing it else, it's a, it's a curiosity <laughs> watch, and then maybe it I'll grab the absolutely that. Yeah. I'll grab the yep. trailer for Trick or Treat and throw that in there. But it's and then funny. I'll pick, yeah. Uh, I'll do They Live. So we'll do one trailer for each in the show notes. Awesome. Uh, you guys can check that out. Andrew Kermeens, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule Anytime. to join us. Always have so, so always. So appreciated. Yeah. You can find Andrew on uh, Andrew Kermeens Art. Uh, and that's on Instagram. Yep. Absolutely go check him out. He's got a lot of great stuff. More stuff coming. Uh, it, it's, it's always a, a treat and a pleasure and special when Andy uh, makes time to join us. So we certainly appreciate that. And I, I think we've got something else coming up with you. Um, in a little while. So that's going to be another good one. I think yeah, if, uh, if we, if we can block <laughs> you in, so we'll schedule yeah. it, but um, that's going to do it for this episode. So check us out on, on social media. We're at 3324 podcast on Instagram and Facebook on Twitter at 3324 P get in before it gets purchased by Elon Musk. He may charge you right now. Accounts are free on Twitter. So jump in and you can follow, uh, follow us there as well. We also do live shows every other Wednesday. So check that out as well. It's a lot of fun. We do trivia. We give stuff away. Uh, I try to do bad impressions, all that, all that <laughs> stuff. You can come laugh at us or laugh at me. That's fine. Show up and, and you'll have a good time. So for Andy, for Eric, this has been Dean asking you to please be kind and rewind. You've been listening to the 3324 podcast with Dean Legiro and Eric Cooper. You can find us on your favorite podcast provider. So please like, subscribe, and rate to become a part of the 3324 family. Your feedback is important. So make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at 3324podcast and on Twitter at 3324p to join the conversation. 